Hi, welcome to Harvard Applied Math 205, a graduate course in scientific computing and numerical methods. I'm Chris Rycroft, and in this video, we're going to look at how we can numerically integrate functions. We're going to introduce the idea of quadrature rules, where we can integrate functions based on several samples of the function at various places. And we're going to look at how we can assess the accuracy of different quadrature rules. Suppose you want to evaluate the integral i of f, which is equal to the integral from a to b of f of x dx. Then one way to proceed would be as follows. We could first approximate f using a polynomial interpolant, pn, and then we could evaluate qn of f, which would be the integral from a to b of pn of x dx. And we could do this exactly since we know how to integrate polynomials. Then qn of f provides us with a quadrature formula, and we would hope that qn of f will be approximately equal to i of f. And a quadrature rule that's based on an interpolant pn at n plus 1 equally spaced points over the interval from a to b is referred to as the Newton-Coates formula of order n. So now let's say that xk is equal to a plus h times k for k equals 0 to n, and here the spacing h is given by b minus a divided by n. Then we could write the interpolant of f in Lagrange form as p n of x is equal to the sum from k equals 0 to n of f of xk times lk of x, and here lk is the Lagrange polynomial associated with the point xk. Then q n of f will be equal to the integral from a to b of p n of x dx, and that would be equal to the sum from k equals 0 to n of f of x k times the integral from a to b of l k of x dx. And we could write that just as the sum from k equals 0 to n of w k times f of x k, where here w k is equal to the integral from a to b of l k of x dx, and is referred to as the kth quadrature weight. And so we see something remarkable happen here. We see that in this formula, the integrals of the Lagrange polynomials can be done ahead of time, and therefore all we need to do to evaluate our integral is to sample our function at these points xk and multiply them by the corresponding quadrature weights. So we'll now look at a few examples. And first, we're going to look at the case when n equal 1. And we'll see that this will actually re recover the trapezoid rule that you may have seen in other contexts. Let's now look at calculating the quadrature weights for the newton coates quadrature scheme when n equal 1. And if we're integrating over an interval from a to b, then we'll have two quadrature points at x0 equal a and x1 equal b and the associated Lagrange polynomials will be L0 and L1. And if we plot these Lagrange polynomials, then they're both linear functions. L0 of x is 1 at x equal a and 0 at x equal b. L1 of x is 0 at x equal a and 1 at x equal b. And if we now wrote out explicit algebraic expressions for these two Lagrange polynomials, we'd have that L0 of x is equal to x minus b, over a minus b, and l1 of x is equal to x minus a divided by b minus a. So now if we wanted to calculate the quadrature weight w0, then that would be the integral from a to b of l0 of x dx, and that would be equal then to the integral from a to b of x minus b over a minus b dx and it's helpful to make a variable substitution and write z is equal to b minus x and therefore dz is equal to minus dx and if we do that then our integral will become the integral from b minus a to 0 of minus z over a minus b times minus dz and this expression has a number of minus signs in here, but we can get rid of these. We've got a minus dz, and we can get rid of that by flipping the order of integration. 
and we can also get rid of this minus sign and flip this a minus b into a b minus a. And if we do that, then we'll get that this is equal to the integral from 0 to b minus a of z over b minus a dz. And if we now perform that integration, we'll have 1 over b minus a, z squared over 2, evaluated between 0 and b minus a, and that will give us b minus a squared over b minus a, and a factor of 2, and that will just give us b minus a over 2. Now let's look at w1. So here we'll have the integral from a to b of x minus a over b minus a, dx and here we'll make the variable substitution of z is equal to x minus a and dz is equal to dx and in this case we don't have so many minus signs to worry about and this will become equal to the integral from 0 to b minus a of z dz over b minus a and we can actually see that this is equal to what we had before, and so it will evaluate to the same thing, and we'll just get b minus a over 2. So if we now think about what this quadrature rule will give us, suppose that we integrated a function from a to b, a function f of x dx, then using this quadrature rule, we would have that this is approximately equal to w0 times f of x0 plus w1 times f of x1. And using our calculations, that will be equal to b minus a divided by 2 times f of a plus f of b. And you may recognize this as the trapezoid rule, which we can derive using other approaches. And in this case, the idea is that if we are integrating this function f over this interval, then we can do so by approximating it as the area of the trapezoid based on the function evaluations at a and b. And so while we can justify this just through geometrical means, we now see that this will drop out with newton coates quadrature when n equal 1. We saw that for the case of n equal 1, the newton coates quadrature formula was equivalent to the trapezoid rule. And if we look at n equal 2, then we end up with the following formula. qn of f is equal to b minus a divided by 6 times f of a plus f of a plus b divided by 2 times 4 plus f of b. And this is actually another formula that's quite well known, and it's referred to as the Simpson rule. We can also develop newton coates formula for higher values of n. Let's now look at estimating the error associated with our quadrature formula, and we'll define en of f as equal to i of f minus qn of f. And en of f is therefore equal to the integral from a to b of f of x dx minus the sum from k equals 0 to n, of wk times f of xk. And our quadrature formula was based on integrating our polynomial interpolant. And therefore, we can rewrite that quadrature formula in terms of the integral from a to b of pn of x dx. And we can therefore combine that expression with our other integral to show that en of f is therefore equal to the integral from a to b of f of x minus pn of x dx. And this is a useful perspective because we've already derived an expression for f of x minus pn of x. And in unit one of the course, we showed that f of x minus pn of x could be equal to the n plus one derivative of f evaluated at some point theta over the interval divided by n plus 1 factorial, multiplied by the product x minus x0, x minus x1, up to x minus xn. 
And if we substitute this expression into our expression for en, then we find that en of f in magnitude is less than or equal to m n plus 1 over n plus 1 factorial times the integral from a to b of the magnitude of the product x minus x0, x minus x1 up to x minus xn. And here, mn plus 1 is equal to the maximum over the interval from a to b of the magnitude of the n plus 1 derivative. So we'll now take a look at this formula for the case of n equal 1, which gives us the trapezoid rule, and we'll look at what we can say for the size of en in this case. Let's now look at doing a calculation with our quadrature rule error estimate. And for a general n, we can say that the magnitude of our quadrature error is going to be less than or equal to the maximum of the n plus 1 derivative of our function divided by n plus 1 factorial times the integral over our interval of the magnitude of a polynomial with roots all of our quadrature points. And let's now look at this for the case of n equal 1 for Newton Coates. And so in this case, we'll have that our e1 of f in magnitude is less than or equal to m2 over 2 factorial times this integral from a to b of the magnitude of x minus a times x minus b. And if we draw out this function that we're trying to integrate here, then it will look like a quadratic that will have roots at a and b. And it has to be positive because of these modulus signs right here. And we actually know that x minus a times x minus b by itself will be negative over this interval. And therefore, what we're actually integrating here is minus x minus a times x minus b. So we can write that this would then be equal to minus m2 over 2 times the integral from a to b of x minus a times x minus b dx. And it's helpful now to do a variable substitution where we say that z is equal to x minus a. And in this case, we'll have that our integral becomes minus m2 over 2 times the integral from 0 to b minus a of z times z minus b minus a dz and that will now integrate to minus m2 over 2 of z cubed over 3 minus z squared over 2 times b minus a evaluated between 0 and b minus a. And so that we see that for both of these terms here, we have, we're have we going to get a common factor of b minus a cubed. And therefore, this will evaluate to minus m2 over 2 times b minus a cubed times 1 third minus 1 half. And this will then evaluate to minus a sixth. And therefore, we'll get that the bound is m2 divided by 12 times b minus a cubed. We saw that the trapezoid rule error satisfies the bound that the magnitude of e1 is less than or equal to b minus a cubed divided by 12 multiplied by m2. And this is a useful formula, but we can note here that the bound for en depends directly on the integrand f via the term mn plus 1. And just as with the Lebesgue constant in unit 1, it's informative for us to come up with a way to compare quadrature rules that is independent of the integrand. And to do this, let's look at the following theorem. If we have a quadrature rule qn that integrates polynomials of degree n exactly, then we can find a constant cn greater than zero, such that the magnitude of en of f is less than or equal to cn times the minimum over all polynomials p of nth degree of the infinity norm of f minus p. And to prove this, 
let's look at a particular polynomial P of nth degree. So the magnitude of I of f minus Q n of f will be less than or equal to the magnitude of I of f minus I of P plus the magnitude of I of P minus Q n of f by the triangle inequality. And we can now use linearity and say that that will be equal to the magnitude of I of f minus P plus the magnitude of Qn of f minus P. And here we've used the fact that our quadrature Qn can integrate polynomials exactly. We can bound these two terms now. So we can say that this expression is less than or equal to the integral from A to B of dx times the infinity norm of f minus p plus the sum from k equals 0 to n of the magnitudes of the quadrature weights wk times the infinity norm of f minus p. And that is then equal to cn times the infinity norm of f minus p where now we define cn to be equal to b minus a plus the sum from k equals 0 to n of the quadrature weights wk in magnitude. Hence a convenient way to compare the accuracy of different quadrature rules is by comparing the polynomial degree that they can integrate exactly. And newton coates of order n is based on polynomial interpolation and hence in general will integrate polynomials of degree n exactly. However we know that newton coates is based on interpolation at n equally spaced points and we therefore think that it will be susceptible to Runge's phenomenon. And we expect that these formulae will become inaccurate for large n. And we can therefore ask ourselves a question, how does that show up in our bound for the error that the magnitude of en of f is less than or equal to cn times the minimum overall polynomials p of degree n of the infinity norm of f minus p? And the answer to this is in the constant cn. And recall that cn is equal to b minus a times a sum from k equals 0 to n of the magnitudes of wk. And we know that the wk are given by integrating from a to b the Lagrange polynomials. And if we plot some example Lagrange polynomials, then we know that for equally spaced points, they will blow up towards the ends of the interval. And therefore, our Cn can potentially blow up as well. Now, if we look in a bit more detail, then we actually know that the sum from k equals 0 to n of the Wk has to just be equal to b minus a. And the reason for this is suppose we integrate just the constant function equal to 1 then in that case we know that that should equal the integral value of b minus a and therefore the sum of the quadrature weights should just equal to b minus a. So that tells us then that if all of the wk are positive then cn will just be equal to b minus a times the sum from k equals 0 to n of the magnitudes of wk and if they were all positive, then we would just get b minus a times the sum from k equals 0 to n of wk, and therefore this would just be equal to 2 times b minus a. So if we had positive weights, then we would know that cn would be a constant, and it would be independent of n, and therefore we would have that our quadrature rule, qn of f, would just tend to the true integral I of f as n tends to infinity. Unfortunately, for Newton Coates, the quadrature weights indeed become negative once n is greater than 8, and therefore Newton Coates is not useful for large n. However, there are several natural ways that we can generalize the current framework that can allow us to get convergence of our integrals when n tends to infinity. And one approach would be to use a piecewise polynomial interpolant. And another approach would be to use a non-equal spacing of our quadrature points. And we'll look at both of these possibilities in subsequent videos.